Good morning. Just like the remnant here right now. <laughs> Uh, we'll pray for all those who are unable to make it today, either from if they're sick or if they're just if they're nervous or whatever. You know, we want to honor every person that comes and uh, and pray for them or that isn't able to come here uh, today. It's one of those times. Now, what do you? We want to deal with these things a little bit differently, and uh, we want to care for our brothers and sisters. The um, hope most on service. Just a, just a couple. Um, the offering obviously is at the door, so we won't be passing out the offering. The um, through, there will be no uh, communion today, and so we're going to go straight from. It'll go him, and I'll announce this at the time. It'll go him, sermon, him. Throw an extra him in there because we have time. Him. It, it'll be just as I am, five seventy. The Apostles' Creed, not the Nicene Creed. And then we'll go into prayers. After the general prayer, we'll do the Lord's Prayer, and then right to the benediction. So that's it. It's a very simple service. The rest of the service will be as follows in uh, Divine Service 1, first setting. Um, there's something else. I think that's all I have for the service. Great. Well. Oh. On this third Sunday in Lent, when we are gathered together, last week we heard about Nicodemus, I'm going to bring that up briefly at the end of the service, and today we have that very well-known story of the, the woman at the well. We're going to talk about that and how the connection between uh, Jesus and the woman at the well and Jesus and us, and the foreshadowing that that is, and, and how it all kind of wraps together. Let us rise if you are able. As we begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 425.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and will our sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you with the law, the word, and the deed. By the Holy Hand of God, and by the Holy Hand of God, we have not loved you with our own hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present to be one. of sin by stages. 
according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted for water. And people grumbled against Moses and said, Why do you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you, there on the rock of Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massah and Meribah, because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. The epistle reading this morning comes from Romans 5, 1 through 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our suffering knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been, been given to us. For a while we are still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for the righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one will dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Please rise. Continue with the uh, verse, the Lenten verse. Jesus said to her, 
you are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one, who, the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming, He who called Christ, who is called Christ. When He comes, He will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am He. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please, you see it as we continue with the hymn of the day. 